الحمد لله الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا فمن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال الله تعالى في القران الكريم فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا صدق الله العظيم last time i was here i gave you the same ayah and we looked into the explanation of this ayah that those people who work hard those people who struggle those people who want to learn those people who give their 100% and more and their whole purpose is to seek allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek his closeness to seek his willingness his mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes ways for them to find him. And we spend a lot of time trying to understand a subject matter which is called the ma'rifah, the knowing of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today I want to bring another idea to you. A lot of the time we hear the words Allahu Akbar. And we repeatedly say these words in the salah and outside of the salah. It literally means Allah is the greatest. But a lot of the times when we say these words, we don't feel them because we do not understand them or try more than the apparent meaning. A lot of the people that you will find, they don't even know what Allahu Akbar stands for, what it means, literally. Forget about understanding it. So today we're going to look at just a glimpse of it when you say, Allahu Akbar what exactly does it mean Allah is the greatest we will take a very simple example from our daily life from astronomy to understand the universe to see what is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're going to start with something that we live on the planet earth compared to the mass of an average human being. So I did some research and I found some numbers. So I may be throwing a lot of numbers at you, but the idea would be to see this wowness and the greatness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mass of an average North American is around 160 pounds. And the mass of the earth is six times 10 to the power of 24. This is a scientific notation number. So in comparison of the two the planet earth mass and the human average north american mass there is a number i'm giving you 60 sextillion which is actually 60 billion trillion that is just the mass of the planet earth to an average human being earth itself that's it so an average north american compared to the earth now you can easily fill in a million earth in the sun that's a comparison now the humans are out of the picture now because they're so small compared to the mass of the earth you can fill in a million earth inside the sun and that's basically not a wow moment yet because there is something called eta coronae this is another planet which was formerly called eta argus is 90 times the mass of sun and shines 5 million times brighter than that of sun then this is not enough yet there is another planet called betelgeuse is 300 times larger than eta coronae 300 times larger than that which itself is 90 times larger than sun and that's not enough either the science shows us that there is another thing called vy canis majoris that star's diameter is 2000 times that of the planet earth sun and it is 155000 times the size of the planet earth 
This is part of the universe. It's part of our galaxy. We're not, I'm not even going beyond our galaxy. This is all in our galaxy. What is the name of our galaxy? Milky Way. That's our galaxy. This Milky Way contains between 200 and 400 billion stars and close to 100 billion planets, our galaxy alone. And this galaxy is not the only galaxy. It's not even one of the larger galaxies. Our closest galaxy next door is Andromeda Galaxy, which is twice our size. Twice our size. Okay? Then, Andromeda is not the only galaxy which is larger. There is another one called M81 Group of Galaxy, which is 60 times, 60 times larger than our galaxy. And that's not enough either. There is another one called IC1011, which is 600 times larger than our galaxy. And all of these galaxies are part of a cluster. One cluster. These bunch of galaxies, they make up a cluster. So the cluster that we live in is a Virgo cluster. And that's not the only cluster. And this cluster itself, our cluster itself has 37,000 galaxies. And the collection of clusters make a supercluster. And our supercluster is called the local supercluster. And there are many other supercluster's in the universe. Scientists in the known universe, we don't even know how far, how big is this universe. There are 10 million superclusters. This is universe. To a human, to the earth, to the sun, to a galaxy, to a cluster, to a supercluster, to a universe. That's how little we are. That is why when we say Allahu Akbar, when this is at the back of your mind, what is I? Who am I? Then really your heart also goes in the sajda. So does your head goes. Because you are truly believing it. That oh my God. I am nothing. You are the greatest. So these are some of the things. Around us to think about. Now think about on the other side. There are objects that are around us. That you and I can't see. Until and unless we have a microscope. And then you put them in a microscope and yet you have to zoom in many times just to look at them. And you come to know that they have societies of those viruses and bacteria. They live in a society, they grow and they die out. Subhanallah. Who creates them? The same Lord that creates this massive universe and beyond. And this is only what we know. We're still trying to understand the complexities of the human brain. We don't understand 100% the human brain either. Because every human brain functions differently. No two humans are like robots. There's this neural system. There's this nervous system. This is human skeleton. Muscles. Organs. This one unit controls them. It learns, it grows, intelligent, yet over the period of time may die out. You will find people who have this disease of being forgetful. Very early in the age, sometimes starts in their 30s. So there are a lot of things around us to look at and wonder. In the summertime, if you, have, have, if you don't have flowers at home... Go anywhere there are flowers. Pick any flower. Look inside the flower. Those little petals that are inside the center of the flower. How many of them are there? How tight? How close? And that's not only one flower. There are many of them. Colors within the flower. The dark, the light, shades. Within the same flower, there are many shades. Who makes those shades? Who makes those colors? Who makes these perennials come every year 
But animals don't. It's the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that makes all trees die when the season changes from summer to fall, but yet there is evergreen by His will stands and stays green. Nothing happens to it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us over and over and over again right in this world, I am ala kulli shayin qadir. I am the one who can do anything. I am not bound by the boundaries. You are bound by the boundaries. So when you are bound by the boundaries, why don't you come and submit yourself in the presence of the one who is not bound by the boundaries? So you say, Allahu Akbar, be submissive. When you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, be thankful to him. When you say, Maliki Yawmiddin, believe in it that one day we have to be answering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the things that we have been doing over here. So what we say, Iyaka na'budu. From you alone, you alone we worship. Wa iyaka nasta'een. And from you alone we seek help. Because who you are? Allahu Akbar. You are the greatest. You are the greatest. That's exactly what the iman, the people with the iman, they understand. So whenever they're hit with bad times, they just say, Hasbun Allah. For us, Allah is enough. وَنِعْمَ wakil, Because they understand Allah is the greatest. The idea is to understand. The idea is not to know more and impress anybody. We're not here to impress anybody. Nobody should be impressing anybody. The idea should be to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to do so, everybody has a different capacity Everybody is in a different place in life in terms of learning. But the idea is to work on the foundation. Because it doesn't matter how tall of a building you and I create. If the foundation is weak, the building will fall down. The foundation has to be strong. Now when you build a house, the house is a basement. That's where you lay the foundation of the house. As an engineer, as an architect, I'm going to make a blueprint and I'll say, okay, this house can bear this much of the weight. As an engineer, I go out there, I make sure that my construction workers are doing things in in accordance with the plan. Now over here, we have houses that are made out of wood, but then there are a lot of other places where houses are made out of cement, concrete. If they're not mixed in the right proportion, the house is weak and will fall down. And it does fall down. When you do not give the columns in the right distance, then the roof falls down. So all of these little things are calculated. And if you do not follow the instructions, the disasters come through. So that's very important, exactly the same way. Our faith has foundations. The principles. Bunya al-Islamu ala khamsin. The five founding principles. Shahada. That I bear witness there is no Lord to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is his messenger, prophet, last messenger, last prophet, the seal of the prophethood. I believe that I must pray, I must fast if I am not stopped by age or other restrictions which could be medical. I must pay zakah if I can. I must go and do hajj at least once in my lifetime if I can. So some founding principles on which the religion stands. So the idea is to strengthen them up first. Then talking and going for big things. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Yes indeed, mu'mineen have succeeded. But in order to succeed... They have to bring something here inside their heart, which is khushur, the humbleness. When they go in front of the Lord, their humbleness. When they come out of the salah, they must maintain the state of humbleness. That is the idea that when you are in salah, you are going to get energized. And coming out of the salah should not de-energize us 
should, we should take that energy from this salah and move with that energy till the next salah. So where will this energy come from? We need to understand. And then we need to believe in it. And then we need to believe that one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one in front of whom we have to go. And he shall decide who goes in the Jannah and who rots in the hell. On that day, we have a hope. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, please enter us in Jannah al-Firdaus without any questions and answers. Because remember, nobody shall enter the Jannah without the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on that day, we expect Allah to be merciful to us. But when we are here, we are not merciful to the other beings. That is not a balancing equation. When I say X equals to Y plus Z, X equals to Y plus Z, I cannot take Z out of the equation and expect X to be equals to the other side. So I have to be merciful to expect a mercy. If I'm mean, if I'm arrogant, towards the beings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I am the one who caused fasad fil the disturbance in the face of the earth, then how could I succeed when I need to succeed the day, when I'll need the mercy? Even the intercession, the shafa'ah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is the mercy of him because he is the Nabi al-Rahmah. He is the Prophet of the mercy. And how, how can I ask him to be merciful to me when I was in merciful with his ummah? With his ummah I was not merciful. And ummah doesn't just mean the believers. Everybody is part of his ummah. Everybody. It is my job to be nice to everybody. Why? Because I am followers of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If I am not true to my leader, who will going to be true to my leader? I have to live accordance with the principles that were laid by him. Then I can expect others to follow. How can I ask others to follow me when I am not true to my own grounds? So the idea is, that we love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than any being. But that love requires some steps to get to. That love comes through the route of obedience. So we need to look back and see how obedient I am. Because if I'm not obedient, my claim that I love him, it doesn't stand. Has no grounds. Or probably is weak. So where is the ittiba' and where is the ita'ah? Because the leaders are there to be followed and believed in. Leaders are not there to be followed like a robot. Because the believing is extremely important in any leadership to sustain. And we believe that he is our leader. So when we believe that, we must follow in his footsteps. We must look back in our lives and see, am I missing things that I'm prophet like? Am I doing things that he disliked? And in order to know that, I must read. I must go and research. I must know what is right from wrong before I can judge myself to see if I'm right or I'm wrong. I must read. I must look into his life. Believe you me or not, people have done such a tremendous work, ready to be read, that I want to go out and read about my prophet. My prophet. That when he enters the Makkah, these are the people, the worst of the worst enemies of his. He says, Man dakhala dara Abi Sufyana fahu aminun. Man dakhala dara Hakim ibn Hizama fahu aminun. Man alqis silaha fahu aminun. Man ghallaqa tilbaba fahu aminun. Wahu fa'uha fahu aminun. The one who enters the Kaaba is in the peace. The one who enters the house of Abu Sufyan is in the peace. The one who enters the house of Hakim ibn Hizam is in the peace. The one who doesn't draw his sword out is in peace. The one who closes his doors is in peace. Everybody is at peace. Aman, aman, aman. The 13 people he said to his companions, they have no mercy today. Over 60% of them were also forgiven. 
likes the wife of Abu Sufyan, Hind, likes the son of Abi Jahal, Ikrama, like the son of Umayya, Safar ibn Umayya. They were the one who were not to be forgiven, yet they were forgiven. The Prophet asked his uncle Abbas, where are the sons of Abu Lahab? Remember the Abu Lahab? Did the Quran say, Stabbat yada Abi Lahab, you want him? He is asking his uncle Abbas, where are my cousins, the sons of Abu Lahab? I want you to bring them to me. I want them to accept Islam. And Abbas goes out looking for them, finds them in the Arafah. He said, where are you guys? We are in hiding because today the Prophet will not going to leave us. He said, no, the Prophet is asking for you. He said, how is it possible? He said, come with me. He grabs them and takes them to the Prophet. And the Prophet accepts them and takes them to the Kaaba. Takes them to the Kaaba, prays to his Lord, and he is happy. وَقَالَ Abbas, Abbas said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, why are you so happy? I haven't seen you so happy. May Allah keep you happy always. He said, I asked for these two guys from my Lord. I ask Allah to forgive them, and He has forgiven them. He has, he has given them to me. My cousins are given to the fold of Islam as forgiven souls. This is the Prophet of Mercy. We want to go out and read about him. You wouldn't believe ulama have written on the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thousands of pages. Thousands of pages. I know when I sit to do a research on the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, I have books that were written during the time of the students of the Sahaba to these times. Every subject matter needs to be understood in the time frame. There are things that are better explained now, but there are things that were better explained then. And then there were things that were better explained in the middle times, when all these ahadiths were compiled. And we're put together in front of us say, you know what, this incident happened like this, 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 this. This is the status of this hadith. This is the research on the narrators of the hadith. You could spend time, just like we spend time in our professional life, just like we spend time going through our phones. That's the time to spend some time with ourselves to improve ourselves. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم